It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Engineered winter weather whiplash is coming back to the U.S., other nations are already being hit hard by the same, and in between the cooldowns, record warmth, which Europe just endured. First headline example from this week from AccuWeather Arctic Blast brings sub zero cold into lower 48 this weekend. From that report, it's going to be some deep cold that's going to be settling in through the central plains. The feels-like temperatures, the report states, are expected to reach dangerous values between 20 and 30 degrees below zero, and they love the population to see those, quote, feels-like temperatures, which have nothing to do with the actual ambient temperature. The report then continues, as the weekend progresses and the final workdays of January begin, cold air is expected to sink into northwestern Texas and the Ohio Valley as well. During this week, Snow fell as far south as southern Arizona, while rain fell in parts of Canada. Does that make any sense? Meteorologically speaking, the short answer is no. Does it make sense when climate disruption operations are considered in the equation? Yes, it makes perfect sense. Snowstorms out of the record warm Gulf of Mexico, again and again and again. So-called winter storms with a warm side and a cold side. Tornadoes and thunderstorms on one side, and chemically nucleated snow on the other. Generally, with a transition zone of freezing rain between as these chemical nucleating elements hit the surface before they set up. Chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding operations can flash freeze crops and populations, and then the controllers can blame it on nature. Further, the matrix media can then sensationalize the engineered winter weather to confuse and divide populations in regard to the true state of the planet's now failing life support systems. Climate intervention operations are a core means of control for the controller, predator, parasite class. If significant percentages of the population don't wake up and face the wider horizon soon, the chapter of the human race on the once thriving planet Earth will come to a close. And those that don't believe this is possible will soon. Wait and see. This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the end of the world as we know it broadcast, commercial free, non political, and covering the most dire and immediate threats we collectively face. Moving on, more puzzle pieces. How much frozen precipitation is falling without the help? of climate engineering and chemical ice nucleation operations. Not so much. New from BBC. How climate change threatens to close ski resorts. The report states from the Swiss Alps to the Rocky Mountains, resorts are grappling with the impacts of climate change by trying to provide sufficient snow cover and rapidly adapt to the changing conditions. They continue, climate change is turning skiing into an endangered pastime. Ski seasons are becoming shorter and slopes are turning green as temperatures rise. Heavy rainfall in alpine resorts contributed to snow melting and slushy conditions. The BBC report finishes with stating that, quote, tourists will continue visiting the mountains even if there is no snow. For the record, when enough of the cryosphere melts, a.k.a. Earth's reflective ice and snow covering, will have blown past the tipping points of the planet's ability to cool itself into the road. The will-the-tourist-still-come part of the equation will mean virtually nothing. And there are still other existential tipping point threats. Massive methane release from thawing deposits in the Arctic. Search Siberian methane craters. Examine the images. You'll be shocked at what you see. Next headline from severeweather.eu, a strong stratospheric warming event is about to start impacting the polar vortex as we head into the final month of the winter season. This report then states this, but where do these warming waves suddenly come from? Question mark. About that question, here's some points to ponder. Ionosphere heater installations like HARP in Alaska are fully capable of creating various atmospheric pressure zones, which in turn 
manipulate upper level wind currents, which move air masses, and can thus create surface cooling in some regions at the cost of creating warming in others. Here's an update on the highly sensationalized California rainpocalypse that wasn't in many regions of California. In my Shasta County Wilderness location, it has already dried out to such a degree that the stream feeding my hydropower turbine already stopped flowing. Dust is blowing, and I just had to start watering trees again in the middle of winter. Literally every fir tree on my mountain is either dead or close to it. They won't make the end of this year. Climate engineering filth layers can be seen in a patchwork all over the sky and all the way to the horizon in places and beyond. All of this filth will continue to settle to the surface, contaminating virtually everything. Not speculation, lab test proven fact. The soil microbial life is all but exterminated. Dead leaves, collapsing branches and trees are all piling up on the forest floor but not decomposing. Again, essential microbial life has been wiped out by the toxic precipitation and the intense UV radiation from the decimated ozone layer, climate engineering core causal factor for that equation as well, liquid and frozen precipitation, all contaminated. The road we are traveling is leading to a very dark destination. When the forests die, we will die. Next headline from many sources, food, feed, and fuel. Global seaweed industry could reduce land needed for farming by 110 million hectares, study finds. End of that headline. From the report, scientists identify parts of ocean suitable for seaweed cultivation and suggest it could constitute 10% of the human diet to reduce the current impact of terrestrial agriculture. Let's stop there for just a moment. I have no words for this kind of so-called science study from so-called experts trying to pacify populations by pretending that the human race can magically save itself by planting over 100 million hectares, the equivalent of about 250 million acres, of ocean flora, which includes kelp, when all species of potentially beneficial ocean flora are completely collapsing around the world. In the case of kelp forests, about a 95% collapse in the northern and southern hemispheres. This report is total delusion and Pollyanna propaganda from the so-called science community as the planet's life support systems completely unravel and the oceans die, converting to what's known as Canfield Ocean, lifeless, superheated, dead, stratified, oxygenless, dead zones. That's the road we're on. On that note this week... The doomsday clock has been moved up to 90 seconds before midnight, a warning issued again this week by the Union of Atomic Scientists. As dire as their warning is, and all of the factors they cite to back up their warning, the single most destructive human activity of all so far, the greatest and most immediate threat we collectively face short of nuclear cataclysm, global climate intervention operations, which are devastating the planet's remaining life support systems, including the ozone layer, and contaminating every breath we take, are completely omitted from this report. Translation, the grave warning from the Union of Atomic Scientists falls far short of just how dark the horizon actually is. How many still believe that pretend public protection agencies like the EPA would alert them to any such environmental dangers? Such a notion couldn't be further from the truth. Governmental environmental monitoring entities exist to mask the most dire threats from the public, not to disclose them. The EPA doesn't conduct any air quality testing for nanoparticles and doesn't look for any elements in the climate engineering category. Elements like aluminum, barium, strontium, manganese, polymer fibers, and now we know even graphene. So there you have it. It's not possible to find what you're told not to look for. These agencies are told not to look for these elements. I know firsthand from closed door meetings at the Capitol with top EPA officials, five of them, meeting arranged by a congressional representative, they told me to my face that they are mandated to look for combustion particulates only. Everything else goes out the window. Moving on from multiple sources this week, this headline, 50 years after the Clean Water Act, toxic substances are still dumped in U.S. waters. Business as usual. Question what will happen as many begin to wake up to what's been done to them? We'll soon enough find out. 
Next headline from the World Economic Forum's own website. Experts at Davos 2023 call for a global response to the gathering, quote, cyberstorm. On this theme, be ready for a shutdown of our ability to communicate as populations begin to wake up. It's not if, but when. Power structures will certainly play this card. Next headline, Davos 2023, whistling past the Great Reset's graveyard. Consider that in post-apocalyptic Hollywood productions like The Last of Us, there's still trees, birds, clouds, rain, animals. The planet is still functioning in spite of the decaying and collapsing ghost cities. But this isn't the road we're on. What our current trajectory is leading to is unimaginably worse. A lifeless, irradiated planet Earth, where even clouds are no longer able to form, because the former miraculous chemistry of our life-giving atmosphere will have been completely obliterated. We're on that path right now, well along it. To clarify, the current level of cloud-destroying Atmospheric gases is already two-thirds of the way to the believed breaking point of cloud formation. If we reach this point, we are done. Venus syndrome will follow. Search geoengineeringwatch.org Venus syndrome to learn more. Please forgive me for doing just a bit more summary ranting. I think it's necessary for clarity. Climate engineering operations, associated frequency transmissions, and industrial pollution have already decimated the ozone layer. Nuclear cataclysm, if it's allowed to occur, will finish the job. In lockstep with the collapse of global civilizations, the 440 existing nuclear power plants around the world will go into complete meltdown. The whole of the human race and the entire web of life would soon perish if this is allowed to occur. The ionizing radiation released by the power plant meltdowns would be piled on top of the radiation that will be let loose from the now seemingly imminent nuclear weapon exchanges between global power structures run by the predator class that have been and are colluding and cooperating behind the curtain with multiple core issues of mass destruction, including global conflict and climate engineering, a.k.a. weather warfare. The global criminal cabals masquerading as legitimate governments appear to view a nuclear conflict as actually being of potential benefit to them. A nuclear exchange would fill the atmosphere with so much toxic material that it would temporarily slow the now runaway climate collapse that is superheating the planet. Many tipping points have long since been breached. The equation is as non-linear as it could possibly be. The fabled and feared nuclear winter is seen as necessary by the controllers, when in fact... If even a small nuclear exchange occurs, it would be the final blow to our climate-engineered planet's already broken life support systems. Game over. And yet, this is exactly the path we are on. Extremely near-term planetary omnicide, while the vast majority remain comatose at the wheel, completely oblivious to the oncoming train with lights flashing and horns blaring. Scripted politics, sports, beer, pizza... All that remains the theme of the final hours. And for the record, both manufactured political factions are equally blind, though in different ways. All part of the predator class agenda. Nero fiddles while Rome burns, as the proverb goes. Bread and circus till the brutal bitter end. Sadly, most Americans don't want to be bothered with reality. Denial feels better for the moment. A constant stream of TV commercials assure us that all we need to protect ourselves is, quote, safe investments. Protect your portfolio, we're told, just by shiny metals. But stop and consider, you can't eat gold and silver. And soon, very soon, the only commodities that will matter is what you can eat, drink, and shelter with. And about saving for those college educations, don't bother. We'll never get that far before the current paradigm completely implodes. You can quote me on that. One arena of study that would matter is how to survive on a decimated planet with Mad Max marauding mobs rampaging across the countryside in search of anything they can find to sustain themselves. But even now, so many are still so committed to the current paradigm, to the matrix, that they'll fight to defend it, even at the cost of ensuring their own near-term demise. 
Those that control the money printing control the matrix and thus the narrative. How could it be otherwise? It's an eyes wide shut notion to believe that those who actually control our government and almost all others are anything less than state-sponsored crime syndicates. At the head of these syndicates are the clinically insane who exist for their own ends. And if you think that they have your best interest in mind on any front or on any issue, time to wake up. And for those that are already fully awake and aware of all that's unfolding, does it feel like you're caught between the hammer and the anvil? Caught between the criminally insane power brokers and a hopelessly asleep at the wheel population? Buckle up. It's going to get rough soon. You can quote me on that as well. So about those that control the narrative, or at least believe they do, as dark as the horizon is, Bill Gates says everything is going to just keep getting better. This week, from numerous corporate media sources, Bill Gates is, quote, very optimistic about the future. He says, better to be born 20 years from now than at any time in the past. So says Mr. Gates. Gates continues with this. Looking further back into history, it's clear that things are only continuing to get better, end quote. Gates also praised, quote, cheap and effective green energy. Question, is Gates just clueless or completely committed to total deception in the population till the moment of impact? You decide. Gates continued saying this. The amount of IQ in the world that's being educated... End quote. That's a bit of an awkward statement from an individual that some would like us to believe is a genius. So what did Gates mean by his statement on IQs? It would seem he insinuated that people are getting smarter, which for the record, couldn't be further from the truth. Here's a question for those that have seen the movie Idiocracy. Was it just a movie or a documentary of humanity's crashing IQ levels? From mahbstanford.edu, this headline, Idiocracy. Is the decline in human intelligence undermining democracy? Question mark. For the record, again, anyone that still believes America is a democracy is living in an alternative reality. Back to the Stanford report on idiocracy. The report states the average rate of decline has been around three IQ points a decade, amounting to the loss of about 13.5% in an average intelligence quotient between 1975 and 2020. Results from separate studies carried out in seven different countries describe a general loss of intelligence. The report continues, so far researchers have not been able to confidently assign a cause to this noteworthy decline, saying only that it is not genetic and must therefore be due to something in society's living environment. Stop there for a moment. Yes, that's really a revelation. Environmental factors. Up to 20 million highly toxic nanoparticles in every breath we take. What could go wrong? Where are the majority of the highly toxic atmospheric nanoparticles coming from? Look up. Connect the puzzle pieces. Before the proverbial clock runs out. The Stanford report continues. The great question is, what has changed so much in society's living conditions as to cause such extensive brain damage during the past 45 years in particular? Question mark. Increasingly, the report says, science suspects the 2.3 billion tons per year of man-made chemicals, many of them nerve poisons, which industrial society has unleashed on itself during this period, and which now permeate our air, our food, our water, our homes, workplaces, our bodies, and our genes on a daily basis. Quote, unquote, from the Stanford report. The report then says, substances to which, because they are universally dispersed around the planet, Almost all humans are now exposed to every moment of their existence. The impact of these nerve poisons is compounded by a second related chemical flood, the endocrine disruptors, EDCs, industrial chemicals which affect basic processes like our growth, development, gender, ability to reproduce, obesity, and cancer risk. A decline of seven IQ points, the report states, translates the average citizen to the intelligence level of the average juvenile delinquent. It's therefore probable that the decline in human intelligence is being accompanied by an increase in rates of crime and violent assault, word for word from this report. So with all that in mind, here's one final statement from Mr. Gates, again made this week, as he tries to convince us that everything's great and it's only going to get better. Gates said, quote, modernity comes with some risks, but overall, Gates says, I'm incredibly optimistic, end quote, from Mr. Gates. For the record, whatever Mr. Gates is optimistic about, 
it can't be the fate of the human race or life on Earth, both of which are now hanging in the extremely near-term balance. Human life expectancy is plummeting. Wildlife populations are crashing. Insect populations are crashing. Plankton populations are crashing. Forests crashing. The ozone layer is imploding. Our oceans are dying by the day. Fisheries are crashing. Any fish that remain are completely toxic. 440 nuclear power plants are poised for near-term meltdown. Nuclear war is imminent. Our entire world literally is toxic and getting worse by the day. Yes, Mr. Gates, so many reasons to be optimistic. The global predator class has big plans for all of us. They're out of time and they know it. They are more desperate and dangerous now than ever before as biosphere collapse unfolds and accelerates with climate engineering operations further fueling the decimation. But by no means our only problem. Countless forms of human activity have laid waste to the planet at absolutely blinding speed. It's not a this or that equation. It's an all the above. The controllers will continue to play ever larger cards. You can count on that. Before getting to the frontline breaking report data, more public pacification blatant lies from the so-called climate science community. This next recent headline of total deception is from NewScientist.com. The worst case climate scenarios are no longer Plausible today, the report states. From the report, 10 years ago, we feared that catastrophic global warming of between 4C and 5C by 2100 was a real risk. Today, the article states, that's no longer credible. So says a single power structure paid so-called scientist, Graham Lawton. One single individual, perhaps an ideologue, perhaps just a paid liar. But when the majority of the populations are told... What they desperately want to hear, even if what they're told flies in the face of reality, and even if what they're told comes from a single individual with an agenda, the majority gulp it down and never look back. So don't worry, everything's fine, because so-called scientist Graham Lawton, representing NewScientist.com, says so. I'm so relieved. And for the record, based on frontline data, we are past three and a half degrees C of warming right now. We're past the point at which humans have existed on the planet now. For the record, it's exactly this kind of power structure paid expert that tells us our checkerboard sprayed filth filled skies are just a result of condensation and that steel structure high rise buildings like WTC7 can collapse at free fall speed if the furniture on the first floor catches fire. We're being drowned in a rapidly rising sea of lies. Pressing on, is so-called renewable energy going to save us from ourselves? Not so much. This headline this week from Bloomberg and other sources. Wind turbines taller than the Statue of Liberty are falling over. Breakdowns of towers and blades have bedeviled manufacturers in the U.S. and Europe. That doesn't sound so good, does it? When we have the so-called environmental groups that won't admit to climate engineering, ramming so-called green energy down our throat. It's better than the outright burning of carbon fuels, but it is not going to save us from ourselves. So-called renewable energy is a fossil fuel or carbon fuel extension, nothing more. New from Popular Mechanics, same theme. Giant wind turbines keep mysteriously falling over. This shouldn't be happening, you think? That's what the headline states. The taller the turbine, the more epic the tumble. Word for word from Popular Mechanics. From their report, wind turbine failures are on the uptick from Oklahoma to Sweden and Colorado to Germany, with all three of the major manufacturers admitting that the race to create bigger turbines has invited manufacturing issues. Multiple turbines that are taller than 750 feet, that's a 75-story building, are collapsing across the world with the tallest 784 feet in stature falling in Germany in September of 2021. A final note on the total disinformation from NewScientist.com. They are, in a sense, actually correct. The current worst case climate scenarios are no longer plausible. What's coming, indeed what's already unfolding, is far worse than any official worst case scenario published by any official agency or any matrix media source. So-called renewable energy isn't 
and it isn't going to save us from ourselves. For those that haven't yet viewed the documentary film about so-called renewable energy titled Planet of the Humans, please take the time to do so. It's available online for free. At the 40-minute point of the film, they show a blowing field of sand in the middle of the Mojave Desert where the first commercial solar plant of its type once stood. It's gone. It was never viable. I spent almost a year of my life working on the construction of that very facility in the electrical industry. The design flaws of the SAG solar plant were obvious even then. Does all this mean that we should just keep drilling and burning 100 million barrels of carbon fuel a day? So many want to convince themselves that doing so is somehow okay, but it's not. Just more nails in our collective coffins. The human race has painted itself into an unimaginably dark corner. There's no magic solution except this. The destruction of the planet's remaining life support systems must stop, or the story ends badly and soon. What are the ramifications of unfolding environmental collapse? With ever-increasing layers and levels of technology only making the scenario worse? We'll soon enough find out, as the planet's ability to feed over 8 million mouths continues to decline. The weather weapon decimation of agricultural regions is further fueling the food production implosion. On that theme from Discover Magazine this week, the domino effects of a global food shortage. From that report, a historic global food shortage means more people than ever are at risk of starvation. They continue, the World Food Program, WFP, estimates that 349 million people in 79 countries are facing acute food insecurity, i.e. they're starving to death, an increase of 200 million. The United Nations estimates almost 900 million people are undernourished. The report then says, as a result of the food shortage, public health officials warn the world is on the brink of a massive humanitarian crisis. The crisis will not be isolated, and food insecurity is associated with social unrest, conflict, and large-scale migration. World leaders caution, the report says, that the lack of needed nutrition will lead to death and massive social upheaval. Not if, but when. It's already happening. But remember... What Bill Gates just told us, everything is just getting better and better. You're listening to the weekly installment of Global Alert News, the bad news broadcast, installment number 390, January 28th, 2023. This is Dane Wigington, your host. Global Alert News is brought to you by geoengineeringwatch.org, the largest and most visited website in the world on the subject of climate intervention operations also known as geoengineering. The commercial-free, non-political Global Alert News Hour is now broadcast on AM and FM stations in Florida, Texas, two stations in San Francisco, Sacramento, San Diego, two Colorado stations including Denver, Portland, Phoenix, Pittsburgh, Santa Cruz, San Bernardino, California, Washington State, Alabama, Columbus, New York State, two stations in the far north of California, Tucson, Arizona, and the Carolinas, north and south. Geoengineering Watch wishes to express our deepest gratitude to those that have helped us to expand our reach and our voice in this desperate last hour effort to sound the alarm. On that subject, if you're on our email list, please put us on your email contact book so that our mail outs don't go to the spam file. Please help us to share the groundbreaking documentary, The Dimming, which fully exposes the climate engineering atrocities now with over 1.1 million views on YouTube. The best way to share is by circulating the direct link to the dimming by email directly from the homepage of Geoengineering Watch. Sharing directly helps us to overcome social media censorship. When viewing our YouTube of the dimming or Global Alert News or any other Geoengineering Watch video on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and comment, all of which helps us to circulate critically important data to a much wider audience. And about reaching those that still aren't looking up, Geoengineering Watch awareness raising materials can be found on our homepage. Our only goal is to provide activists what they need to move this fight forward. There are very high quality printed materials with shocking images. A picture's worth a thousand words, as the proverb goes. We now also have new Geoengineering Watch hoodies to go with our new Geoengineering Watch shirts, both with very high quality four color images on both sides. The images of, of a military jet descending down over the planet and spraying the dimming sun is in the background with this caption stop climate engineering investigate and below that 
geoengineeringwatch.org. Scannable business cards and bumper stickers, all effective tools to help strike up a conversation on the climate engineering issue. Waking the masses to the climate engineering onslaught is the great imperative. If we can expose it, we can stop it from the inside out as we awaken our military brothers and sisters to what they're participating in, their own demise and ours. And this footnote, if you want to share a picture with a geoengineering watch hoodie or t-shirt, perhaps at a gym, farmer's market, or busy downtown street, please send your photo to us so we can post it as part of our activist compilation, which is now part of our materials page. The images encourage others to make their voices heard in this all-important battle to sound the alarm. Final mention. If you know any radio station that might be interested in airing the non-political, commercial-free Global Alert News Hour, have them contact us at admin at geoengineeringwatch.org. We'll take it from there. This battle is a team effort. If we can awaken the masses, we could yet alter the equation. Moving on with this question, if the planet is actually accelerating into a runaway meltdown scenario, how can the following headlines from this week be explained from many sources, including BBC, UK Independent, Bloomberg, and the Washington Post? Here's a hint. More chemical ice nucleation cloud seeding engineered cooldowns being carried out. First headline. Chinese city experiences coldest temperature in nation's records. From that report, the temperatures in northern China dropped to negative 53 degrees C. That's negative 63.4 degrees Fahrenheit on January 22nd. Next headline, same theme. Afghanistan, China, and Japan battle dangerous lows as record cold hits Asia. Again, Chemical ice nucleation operations are core to this equation. Search the engineering winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org to learn more. This is not speculation. It's hard science backed up with science study, patents, lab testing, all of it in the engineering winter section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. Keep in mind that All of the now flash-frozen record cold regions have also recently endured record heat and record flooding. About all the weather and temperature whiplash scenarios I just covered, in fact, about weather and climate anything, everything, from any source, from any individual, if any discussion of these subjects doesn't address climate engineering first and foremost, if the climate engineering factor isn't considered, the conversation and the source is disinformation. By omission. Pressing on, more bad news on the so called green energy isn't going to save us from ourselves front. From the UK Guardian revealed how US transition to electric cars threatens environmental havoc. From that report, the US's transition to electric vehicles could require three times as much lithium as is currently produced for the entire global market causing needless water shortages, indigenous land grabs, and ecosystem destruction inside and outside its borders, new research finds. And there's no could, may, might on this equation again. It's already happening. It's hitting a wall. Collapse is unfolding in some of the nations that produce these materials. I'll get to that in a moment. The report then states, it warns that unless the U.S.'s dependence on cars in towns and cities falls Drastically, the transition to lithium battery powered electric vehicles by 2050, these dates mean nothing. On the current course, we won't be here. And I don't care how unbelievable that sounds to most. That's a mathematical and statistical trajectory. Look at the math. You won't have doubts any longer. The report says global environmental and social inequalities linked to mining may even jeopardize the 1.5 degrees C global heating target. No need to worry about that. Again, we've blown past the 3.5 degrees C mark right now. Official high temperatures are being radically underreported. I was in Reading this week, and yet again, about a 5 degree underreporting of the official high temperature. It was in the low 70s, and it was reported as 68 as the official high for the day. Constantly, we see this now. And if you plug this into the equation, we are so far past the breaking point and so far past what the stated increase in temperatures are, it's inconceivable that such a deception could occur, and people are clueless. Continuing from this report, most forecasters predict a lithium supply crunch in the next 5 to 10 years. 
again, don't worry about that last statement from the UK Guardian report. If anyone's left on the surface in the next five to 10 years, their priorities will be to hide from ionizing radiation and finding their next bite of food, along with their next drink of contaminated water, which is already the case today. Not an uncontaminated drop of rain on the entire planet. Not my opinion. Peer-reviewed science study with tests from all over the globe. The great unraveling is well underway and accelerating by the day. Collapse, chaos, and carnage is coming. Next subject, rioting in Peru for many sources. Brazil riots, Peru protests, Latin America unrest is growing. From Reuters, same theme. Glencore copper mine in Peru suspends operations after another attack. That's going to lead to more supply chain issues soon. There's more. The Antipaque copper mine in Peru suspended operations recently after protesters attacked the premises for the third time this month. The global commodity giant said as social unrest in the South American nation continued. Another headline, same theme from U.S. News. Thousands march on Peru's capital as unrest spreads. Buildings set ablaze. Don't see any of that on U.S. mainstream media, do we? We see whatever drama they pick and they completely blot out the wider horizon. That's the goal. Though there are sometimes exceptions, even from U.S. media. This one from NPR. As its only remaining elected officials depart, Haiti reaches a breaking point. From the NPR report, Haiti, a country long beset by catastrophe and political turmoil, is facing perhaps its steepest challenge in recent decades as its Piecemeal government, now lacking any democratically elected officials, struggles to chart a path forward amid gang violence and cholera outbreaks. The country has had no president since the last one was assassinated in 2021. Its Senate is supposed to have 30 members, and its lower legislative chamber should have 119. All of these seats are unfilled. Last week, its 10 remaining senators departed office after their terms ended. The report then says the situation is catastrophic. It continues, it's collapse, says Patrice Dumont, one of the 10 senators who departed office this month. There is no government in Haiti. And the U.S. and its three-letter agencies has done everything they could over decades to fuel this situation. And it's not going to stop in Haiti. Back to the bottom line of biosphere collapse, which is the core factor that is forcing everything else to unravel. From Medium.com, faster than expected is the headline. Why most climate scientists can't tell the truth in public. The report says COP27 reinforced this problem when, as ever, the IPCC, that's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, based their warnings exclusively on a synthesis of climate scientists' reports that they knew undermine both what's already happening and the speed of catastrophic failure. The IPCC, by the way, is the largest scientific panel ever created on any subject in human history. Paid liars, all of them. The report says people know it's bad, but not how bad. Why? Again, because the money printers control the narrative. They control the paychecks of so many so-called scientists who say what they're told to say and don't say what desperately needs to be said. The truth. Continuing on the environmental collapse theme from the Washington Post, giant iceberg breaks off from Antarctica. Aerial view is, quote, spectacular. A 600-square-mile iceberg broke away from an ice shelf, but scientists say the event is not related to climate change. If you know anything about science, there is no chance that they could make such a statement. No chance. What causes ice to melt, change from its current form to another form, i.e. from solid to liquid. It's obviously more warmth from below and above. So when these scientists say this, just like the earlier scientist I cited who says, don't worry, it's all going to get better by 2100, as if we're really on that trajectory. This pacifies populations. All they need to be told is what they want to hear, and they don't want to know anything else. And that's why we're in this dark place. Here's a quick rundown of what's occurring with the land-based ice in Antarctica and Greenland. Land-based ice is what raises sea levels. Meltdown. Rapidly rising ocean temperatures are melting the glacier buttresses from below. Rising air temperatures from above. In the warmer months, melt ponds and lakes 
form on glacier surfaces. The pooling meltwater eventually breaks through into drainage shafts called moulons, which drain the water to bedrock at the bottom of the glacier. The water acts as a lubricant, accelerating the slide of the land-based ice into the oceans. Industrial pollution, smoke particles, and climate engineering elements falling out onto the surface are building up on ice surfaces, darkening them, and thus increasing their heat absorption, which further increases the melting. In addition, climate engineering is decimating the ozone layer, adding more to the heating problem. About the climate engineering part of the puzzle, in addition to being used as a weather weapon, again, geoengineering operations are also used to mask the true extent of damage to the planet while paradoxically creating more overall planetary heating in the process. Here's a few more cases in point on the engineered winter weather parade in the U.S. Last week, winter storm Iggy. And since Iggy, winter storm Yaminas and Cassandra. The weather makers tried desperately to chemically nucleate some frozen material for New York City, but the flow of moisture from the record warm Gulf of Mexico and the record warm Atlantic was too much for even the massive cloud seeding with chemical ice nucleating elements to overcome. Headline. From last week, from the New York Post, storm to drench New York City as city experiences longest stretch without snow. From the New York Times, this, why hasn't it snowed yet in New York City? Question mark. Again, the answer. New York City's close proximity to the rapidly warming Atlantic Ocean and the warm flows of moisture from the record warm Gulf of Mexico is making it ever more difficult for the climate engineers to pull off the engineered winter weather events. A report of the last nucleated snow event in my region, in the forest of Northern California, the snow hardly melts, even in the sun, even with above freezing temperatures. Days after the artificially frozen material fell, again at above freezing temperatures, strange patches of it remained with little or no moisture below or around it, aka almost no runoff. It's called sublimation, a hallmark characteristic of chemically nucleated frozen material. Back to the warming and dying of the oceans off the coast of New York and everywhere else. From the UK Guardian this week, extinction crisis of sharks and rays to have devastating effect on other species study finds. The report says almost two-thirds of sharks and rays that live around the world's coral reefs are threatened with extinction with potentially dire knock-on effects for ecosystems and coastal communities according to new research. These sharks and rays have evolved over 450 million years and survived six mass extinctions, but they can't deal with what's happening now. Think about that. 450 million years, and in 200 years of industrialized, militarized civilizations, we're about to wipe them out. This is not just a few species, the report stated. This is a broad extinction crisis. As sharks and rays disappear, the study said there would be cascading effects on other species. Where have I heard that before? Cascading co-extinction scenario. For how many years has Geoengineering Watch tried to sound the alarm on this? Another headline from phys.org. New virus discovered in whales and dolphins across the Pacific. From chickens to whales, new viruses just keep coming from the ether. Or are they coming from somewhere else? You decide. So many continue to go about their lives as if their lives are going to continue as they were. Good luck with that. The party's over. On a recent broadcast, I stated the following, and I stand by it, that I would be surprised if our current paradigm makes it to the end of the new year. And some then quoted me as saying that none of us will be around by the end of 2023. That's not what I said. Though that's certainly a possibility given all the factors that are already past the breaking point, including enough nuclear weapons to take out humanity a thousand times over. Again, what I said is that I would be surprised if our current paradigm made it to the end of 2023. Accuracy with quotes and meanings matter. Credibility matters. And an overturning of the paradigm could happen on any day because the power structure has cards they can play that would make that happen when they think they're about to lose total control. And they're close to that point. They won't let the population just panic, wake up, and go looking for them with their pitchforks and torches. Be ready for anything at this point. And some still quote me as saying that climate engineering is the only source of damage to the climate system. Again, I've never, not once, 
made any such statement. All forms of human activity are, in essence, a form of climate engineering. So when people ask, is it engineered or is it people? Which is it? I'm asked this all the time. It's all the above. It's not a this or that equation. All of it that disrupts the planet's energy balance and the life support systems are all a part of the problem. Climate engineering at this moment being the biggest single part of the puzzle, but by no means the only piece. Who's behind it all? Who's pulling the strings? What part have the global controllers played in this possible final chapter of the human race? Here's a core part of the equation that has led us to this dark hour. From the Project for a New American Century, a document titled Rebuilding America's Defenses. Who are the authors? Dick Cheney, Paul Wolfowitz, Donald Rumsfeld, and the rest of their ilk. Armchair war hawks that never saw a single second of combat. Demented individuals like this who control the strings of our so-called government from behind the curtain are willing to sacrifice countless innocent lives, military and civilian, in their quest to accomplish their agendas. Here's excerpts from the Rebuilding America's Defenses document, a.k.a. the RAD document. First, this. Regime change. Several statements advocating the possible necessity of removing hostile regimes can be found in the document. American military preeminence will continue to rest in significant part on the ability to maintain sufficient land forces to achieve political goals such as removing dangerous regimes. Translation, any government that doesn't support U.S. total hegemonic power. What did the Project for a New American Century group state on the record one year prior to the events of 9-11? This, that short of a, quote, new Pearl Harbor, end quote, event, they wouldn't be able to carry out their agenda of U.S. military expansion and occupation around the world. A reminder, after 9-11... U.S. military had the full unquestioning support from the population, support for anything and everything they wanted to do. What a surprise. Connect the dots. More from the RAD report, Overseas Bases. A supplement to forces stationed abroad under long-term basing arrangements, the United States should seek to establish a network of, quote, deployment bases or forward operating bases to increase the reach of current and future forces. That's called empire. Next excerpt from the RAD document, Future Wars of Pax Americana, processes of transformation as enduring military missions worthy of a constant allocation of dollars and forces, the military-industrial complex controlling it all, just as Eisenhower warned so long ago. Next heading under the RAD document, Rebuilding the Military. If an American peace is to be maintained... And what does that mean? It simply means total U.S. hegemonic power over everyone and everything. It says, to be maintained and expanded, it must have a secure foundation of unquestioned U.S. military preeminence. No one else is allowed to challenge that power. Total hegemonic control. Peace by perpetual war. How's that working out so far? Next on the RAD document, control of space. The RAD document advises instituting a new space service, thereby escalating U.S. military preparedness from the theater level to the global level in order to achieve worldwide dominance, both militarily and commercially. Side note question, how many stop to ponder this? Does it seem even remotely rational that we're told U.S. agencies like NASA were routinely driving an electric vehicle dune buggy around on the moon in the 60s and no one's ever been back. And now NASA says that they no longer have the tech to make it to the moon. NASA representatives have said on film and on the record, I viewed it with my own eyes, that they lost the technology to go to the moon along with many of the film reels from the lunar landings. The official statement is that the film reels were expensive and no one was viewing them, so they just taped over the moon landings. Is that even remotely believable? We live in a planetary asylum. Moving on, more from the PNAC Rebuilding America's Defenses document. This chapter, Control of Cyberspace. Is that any surprise? Is there any question at this point about who's pulling the strings from behind the curtain? About who controls the narrative? We are drowning 
in a sea of lies and tyranny that the vast majority refuse to even consider, let alone investigate. Government is a state-sponsored crime syndicate. Nothing less. A final project for New American Century, quote, Since today's peace is the unique product of American preeminence, a failure to preserve that preeminence allows others an opportunity to shape the world in ways antithetical to American interest and principles, a.k.a. empire. The document continues, The price of American preeminence is that just as it was actively obtained, it must be actively maintained. That's page 73 of that document. Translation, maintained at any cost to anyone or anything, including populations and the planet. Indeed, all life on earth. For those that are still trying to convince themselves that the U.S. population is part of the Global Controller Club and thus will be protected by it, please wake up. Soon. Time is not on our side. The U.S. population, because many are armed, are not just expendable to the predator class, but are a rapidly increasing liability to it. What are the foundational factors fueling the exponentially accelerating insanity? Biosphere collapse and the end of cheap energy. Peak energy has passed, yet energy blindness continues. How many have any clue whatsoever about the true extent of energy decline? Here's a start. In the year 1900, it took the energy in one barrel of oil to get a hundred more out of the ground. Today, this equation has declined by 95%. Now, the energy contained in a barrel of oil can only extract five more. Again, a 95% decline. Soon enough, the carbon fuel extraction equation will become an energy net negative equation, at which point there is no point. The Canadian tar sands nightmare is a stunning example. It can take as much as 1.4 units of energy to end up with one unit of energy of the desired final product, oil. To frame it another way, in order to transform the tar sands into oil, there is a net loss of energy. Since there's an abundance of natural gas in the tar sands region, that source of energy is used to help convert the tar sands into the final product, oil, at a net loss. But for societies that are completely addicted to the loot, plunder, pillage, and pollute paradigm, it doesn't matter. Whatever it takes to keep the party going is acceptable to the power brokers and, sadly, to much of the public who, in reality, don't seem to actually care where the energy is coming from, so long as it keeps coming. The same courageless crowd doesn't care what's occurring in our skies, so long as they're allowed to continue pursuing their personal pleasures and paradigm. What a tragic last chapter of the human race. So, what do we do? What can we do? I will say again, as I have in previous broadcasts, we prioritize. We start with facing the biggest single hole in the bottom of the boat. Climate engineering, a.k.a. highly toxic weather warfare. Man's attempt to play God with the weather is preventing the planet from responding on its own to the damage already done from countless other forms of insane and unsustainable human activity. Climate engineering fallout is also contaminating everything from the clouds to the ground to literally every breath we take. We're in a fight for life. We should, we must conduct ourselves accordingly. Doing nothing isn't an option. Yes, all of this can be completely overwhelming, but never forget that condition is a choice. We also have the power to choose not to be swept away by the rapidly rising sea of insanity that surrounds us. When we choose to exercise and strengthen our philosophy and our faith, when we remember there is unshakable solace in doing what is right because it is right, we can summon the courage to continue our march up the mountain. And when you reach the summit, which in the beginning seemed an impossible task, you can look back at your path and know that your journey mattered in ways that perhaps we can't yet fully know or understand. Every single individual that our collective efforts helps to awaken and to see the wider horizon matters in and of itself. Courage is the key to all other virtues. Without it, the others can't be attained. The sand in the hourglass is running down by the day. But we're still here. We're still standing. We can still make a difference. 
This is our part in the play. Let's man our posts and stand our ground and never be deterred by those that fearfully cling to the herd mentality denial. They'll be forced to face reality soon enough. Check the activist suggestions link on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org for specific input on how you can help to move this fight forward. Please make your voice heard, make every day count. Feed courage, not fear. One foot in front of the other, toward the summit, exposing the insanity and turning the tide. Until next week, this is Dane Wigington from geoengineeringwatch.org.